I am in front of the YMCA on Topper Street, Montreal. That's a residence for refugees who are new to Canada. Several of the refugees here are wasting the monies given to them. How do I know that? Because a couple of them approached me to become a resident in my apartment. But what did they do with the monies? Rather than wanting to pay rent, they ordered stuff online from Temu and had the postage packages sent to my apartment. Stay tuned and I'll give you my opinion of whether or not Canada should allow certain refugees to come to Canada and who I think qualify to be wasting my taxpayers' money. For all of those who may get misconstrued by my video, I want to make it clear that I have no problem with refugees from war-torn countries seeking asylum in Canada. Example, Palestine, Somalia, Sudan, just name it a few. I don't think it is necessary for me to name all of the war-torn countries that I have empathy for. My concern is the amount of fake refugee claimants that are wasting taxpayers' money and time while African nurses and temporary workers coming to Quebec are sent back to their homeland. Fake refugees are not contributing to the tax system. They are getting free money and stay. Nurses who arrive in Quebec and who are contributing to the system are given one chance to sit the exam to get Quebec accreditation. But if they fail, that's the end of their dreams in Quebec. Meanwhile, refugees who are denied Canadian status can appeal the judge's decision within 15 days of that denial. But nurses who fail the exam and want to stay in Quebec are offered work as caregivers on a three-year contract. Or they can lose support and status, forcing many of them to accept a job as a caregiver bathing the elderly in long care homes, but on the opposite side, refugees in Quebec can get support up to one year. Special need refugees can get support up to two years. Who are these special need refugees? These are refugees who are experiencing trauma from violence or torture and the effects of systemic discrimination in their homeland. In the past two years, the government of Quebec spent $65 million on recruiting nurses and in 2023 alone, Quebec spent $576 million on refugees. I met a group of refugees staying at the Topper YMCA residence in Montreal. They were looking for an apartment to rent and I said, I have rooms to rent. I asked, are you working? They said no, but the government gave us $800 plus monthly we can pay. I told them the price of the room will be $500 each and it comes fully furnished with queen or double beds, washing machine, stove, table chairs, electricity, heating, Wi-Fi, even utensils and cutlery are included. They asked, can we put a group of people in one room for the $500? I said no, but I can put a maximum of two persons for $700. We agreed and I drove the four guys to my duplex and showed them the rooms. They asked, where can they send Western Union money back home? I said, maybe Walmart. I asked for a deposit of $100 each from these individuals because since they had enough money to send home, then maybe they can pay the deposit now. The moving date was set for the 25th of the month. I received a call on the 20th of March. We are coming to your house tomorrow. All of the guys, because we need to know how to get there by bus. I said, okay, come and bring me the balance of the rent and take the keys to the apartment at the same time. When they arrived, stories started like, we are taking the place, but we have to pay our lawyers to stay in Canada. And monies that you're asking from us is not available now. And the government is going to deposit money in our account soon and we will be able to pay you. No. These guys have the latest brand name, clothing. Each of them have two cell phones like businessmen. I asked, can you pay me electronically? They say they don't know how to pay electronically. Funny, this is a real funny thing. The first time I ever saw mobile payments or electronic payments 
was in the country that these guys came from. I said, here is your rental deposit because I don't spend the winters in Canada. I don't think you pay me once you move into my unit. Well, they leave not feeling upset at all. Why I say they weren't upset at all is because most people that is denied a rental unit have a kind of sad or unpleasant look on their face. The next day, one of the guys called me, Mark. I want you to put my package in the house. I shouted, what package are you talking about? The refugee said, I got an alert on my phone. I can see the package by your door. We order stuff and it's coming to the address you give us. I say, you need my consent to send stuff to my address. I am not touching nothing. Plus, I'm going on a trip tomorrow. He said, it half in our smart watches and jewelry. And I need it. I purposely leave those packages outside because I was traveling the next day and that's not my business. I started getting messages from most of the guys. We need to talk to you. Call us after your trip. I often wonder after that encounter. Were these guys real refugees? Or are they here to abuse the refugee system by crying homophobic in their country because their country have no war? While well, nurses and students who contribute to Quebec are asked to leave Canada. To end with a funny note, earlier this year, Quebec asked Ottawa for a $1 billion reimbursement of what they spent on refugees coming to this province. My name is Mark. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and tell me what do you think. Should refugees over nurses and students in Quebec?